hello dear students uh, welcome again in this uh, nuclear physics uh, class so so far we have talked about uh, the beta minus and beta plus uh, emission and we have ignored the third type of uh, beta transition that is generally known as the orbital electron capture so in this today's lecture we will uh, drive the expression for uh, uh, the energy and then uh, and we will discuss about the comparative half life of a reaction which is undergoing this orbital electron capture and so let us start our lecture so in this electron capture orbital electron capture process so when the unstable nuclei which have a higher z value so the coulomb barrier tends to prevent the emission of this uh, positive uh, electron so therefore an alternative mechanism for the transforming uh, of uh, proton into neutron can come uh, into the operation so you can uh, see in this process so when a nucleus uh, which uh, absorb an electron Uh, from the uh, orbital electron like from k shell or l shells so the most likely it can absorb from uh, the closest shell that is the k shell so using the first or second you can see that this carbon uh, nucleus when it absorb this orbital electron and this undergoing uh, transformation into boron plus a neutrino so uh, this uh, process uh, is uh, the capture of orbital electron uh, from the uh, by the nucleus and it was uh, first suggested by uh, yukawa and it was uh, discovered by l alvarez in 1938 so basically uh, what is uh, the reaction uh, mechanism for this orbital uh, electron uh, capture process so this uh, proton of the nucleus it absorb an orbital electron and it converted into neutron and along with that the neutrino particle it is uh, yeah, being emitted so electron it is usually captured uh, from the first quantum level that is uh, from this uh, k shell so instances of electron capture from l shell they are uh, has been observed but they are not uh, so common so in uh, this uh, all the energy uh, which is being released uh, so most of the energy it is being carried by this uh, neutrino Uh, so the beta plus uh, uh, decay so the opposite of this orbital electron capture process so if i write this electron to this side so it will uh, uh, go and it can where this is uh, the reaction mechanism for beta plus decay now this orbital electron capture process uh, occurs uh, at uh, those instances where beta plus decay is not possible so uh, all uh, you all know that we have discussed uh, the q value all the of these uh, all three types of uh, beta emission process so beta decay uh, occurs uh, uh, when at least uh, 2 mev c square of uh, the energy which is available <laughs> so uh, while the electron capture it often uh, is occurred most of the time so the occurrence of beta decay is more likely as compared to beta plus decay so in this uh, orbital electron capture process uh, so which is uh, uh, more frequent as compared to this beta plus decay so the kinetic energy of this emitted neutrino you can find out that is equal to e not plus mec square minus of e beta so where e not that is the available energy which is uh, corresponding to mass difference of parent 
and daughter nuclei. So this is the difference in energy between the parent and daughter nuclei while Eb that is the binding energy of uh, this uh, orbital electron so in its uh, respective atomic shell. So we all know that if uh, the nucleus which is in the excited state if it has uh, uh, more energy as compared to the binding energy of this orbital electron uh, only in that case it can uh, capture this uh, electron from this uh, orbital uh, shell so this uh, theory of electron capture it is uh, similar to ordinary beta decay uh, in which the electron is uh, uh, having some definite energy state so similarly uh, as we have discussed in the fermi theory of beta decay so the transition probability per unit second which is uh, correspondingly known as the decay constant so the decay constant we will uh, derive the expression for this orbital uh, electron capture so the lambda value which is 2 pi over h bar into the matrix element hif square into the density of states so here the density of states uh, we, we will discuss uh, for the number of neutrino particles which are emitting uh, at some certain uh, energy so this uh, equation we can expand so that is equal to psi i star h i f psi f into d square d tau into dn over de of this neutrinos so this dn over de nu that is the density of neutrino states so in the fermi theory of beta minus decay we have discussed about the density of beta particle that is dn over de of beta while in this orbital electron capture process as most of the energy it is being carried out by these neutrino particles so we will uh, discuss about the density of uh, neutrino states so <coughs> So the density of neutrino states, uh, uh, the neutrino which is of definite energy which is being emitted. So the density of states corresponding to that for the neutrino which is having a momentum of P nu which we can write in terms of uh, energy. So that is E nu over C. So the number of neutrino states So which are uh, emitted in this uh, momentum range uh, which is from uh, p nu to p nu plus uh, dp nu <coughs> so that will be equal to uh, delta n nu so the value of this delta n nu that we can write down 4 pi p nu square into dp nu into omega over h cube where Omega is the corresponding normalized volume so this equation we can write down 4 pi p nu square dp nu into omega over h is 2 pi h bar q so this whole transformation it is being taken place within some special volume omega so this equation in terms of energy so if i put the value of this momentum and i convert this equation in terms of energy so this equation becomes dn nu so that is 4 pi e nu square into de nu into omega over 2 pi h cube into c cube 
so the density of states in terms of energy delta n nu over delta of e nu which is the density of a neutrino so which is equal to e nu square into omega over 2 pi square h cube into c cube so let us say this is our equation number one <clears throat> so uh, as we discuss in this uh, beta minus summation the transformation of a parent nucleus into the product nucleus it uh, was taken place by the weak nuclear weak interaction so in that uh, con it contains uh, the uh, beta wave uh, a beta particle wave function and this uh, neutrino wave function so in that uh, expression of a fermi theory we have considered these uh, both wave function as the plane wave function so since a neutrino which is a neutral particle the neutrino wave function so that is uh, equal to 1 over under root of omega exponential of i k nu dot r so being a planar wave uh, solution so the value of uh, this k nu dot r which comes out to be very very less as compared to 1 so we can write this uh, solution as 1 over under root of omega so similarly the electron which is uh, no longer a planar wave solution because it is being carried out from the k shell so the wave function of uh, the electron for this k shell which is most likely for a hydrogen like atom so the uh, electronic wave function so that we can write down as something like a wave function from this k shell orbital electron that is equal to 1 over under root of pi z over a naught raised to power 3 by 2 exponential of minus z dark over a naught so where a naught that is generally known as the bohr radius which is 4 pi epsilon naught h bar square over m naught into a square so that is generally known as the bohr radius because the electron it is being captured from this atomic electron and the z that is generally known as the atomic number of parent nucleus so far r is equal to 0 so if uh, the shell it is uh, very very close to this uh, uh, electron capture process for this nucleus the value of this phi uh, it comes out to be 1 over under root of pi into m e z e square over 4 pi epsilon naught x square raised to power 3 by 2. So this is uh, our equation number. So let us give some numbering. So this is equation number 2. This is equation number 3. So therefore the probability of a K electron capture uh, per second per unit second it is generally given as the decay constant that is lambda K it comes out to be 2 pi over H square into G square into phi E square phi nu that is the neutrino wave function into mif square that is the matrix element multiplied by the density of neutrino states so putting the value of this uh, phi e and uh, phi nu in these two equations so this uh, what we get is 2 pi over h into g square <laughs> pi e is 1 over pi into m e z e square over 4 pi epsilon naught h square raised to power 
3 by 2 so since it is a square so under root uh, uh, this get cancelled so into e new square omega over 2 pi square c cube h bar cube into mif square so this is the value of a density of states so this uh, uh, what we get uh, after uh, solving these equation so the decay constant for this uh, k electron so this comes out to be z cube z square m e cube into e raised to power 6 over 32 pi raised to power 5 oxylon naught cube h raised to power 10 c cube into m i f square into putting the value of e nu so e nu is e naught plus 1 minus of b k into m e c square square so since we have uh, taken uh, uh, into account uh, uh, the two electrons which are present in the k shell so therefore e nu it is uh, expressed in uh, terms of uh, m e c square so the value of this lambda k so this comes out to be g square into c z q m e raised to power 5 e raised to power 6 e naught plus 1 minus of b k so here is a k over 32 pi raised to power 5 oxylon naught cube h raised to power 10 into m i f scale <coughs> so here we will consider the function f k that is uh, uh, the indefined parameter which we have used uh, uh, in the comparative half life so this uh, if we consider that it is equal to z cube e raised to power 6 e naught plus 1 minus of b k square over 16 pi square oxylon naught cube c cube h raised to power 3 so this equation so that is equal to 4 pi into alpha z cube e naught plus 1 minus of b k square so where alpha that is generally the fine structure constant so whose value is equal to 1 over uh, 37 so alpha it is generally uh, alpha square it is equal to 16 pi square oxylon naught square h bar square over e raised to power 4 so when you solve this uh, so the value of this alpha it comes out to be 4 pi oxylon naught square oxylon naught into h over e square so which is of the order of 1 over 137 So putting the value of this fk, so these equations in this value, so the lambda k on the left hand side which is equal to log of 2 into tau of k. So this is the half life period. So that comes equal to c dash into f of k. So, moving this uh, tau towards the right hand side, so fk into tau of k, so that is the comparative half life. So, that is equal to log of 2 over c dash, where this c dash uh, that is. Uh, uh, we can write down so this equal to so just a minute so let me use this so 
so this uh, c dash so if we consider the whole term so because log of 2 it is also a constant value so this is equal to 2 pi q into h raised to power 3 log of 2 over g square c raised to power 4 m e raised to power 5 into m i f square so this c dash we have already discussed when we have discussed the discu uh, discussion of comparative half life so this is the value of uh, c dash so this equation uh, becomes f of k so just a minute let me so this is again a constant term so this uh, comparative half life it uh, indirectly depends upon the value of this uh, g and it depends upon the value of this uh, uh, matrix element so the binding energy of this uh, uh, k electron So this we can write down as equal to 1 over mec square into m raised to power me into z square e raised to power 4 over 32 pi square xylen naught square into h square. So this comes out to be z square e raised to power 4 into 32 pi square xylen naught square into h square which is equal to alpha z square over 2 <coughs> so let us take uh, a reaction so if this uh, beryllium 47 so it is uh, capturing a electron from this k shell and it is being converted into uh, lithium and along with that uh, the neutrino particle is being emitted so in this uh, reaction experimentally it is found that the transformation energy so that is uh, eb which is equal to ep e naught plus one minus of uh, so the equation which we have used in this so this is uh, e naught plus one minus of bk So this uh, uh, E naught for this reaction, so that is equal to 0 0.35 mega electron volt, while uh, torque A that is equal to 53.28 days. That the half life period of this reaction is uh, 53 days. So for the K shell, the binding energy, so this uh, comes out to be equal to 100. 12 electron volt so this value it is very very small as compared to the value of this uh, e naught plus one so therefore uh, this is uh, the maximum uh, energy they have found experimentally so the value of this binding energy it is very very small so it is being neglected so the fk parameter so this comes out to be 4 pi into alpha z cube into e naught plus 1 square. So putting the value of this uh, uh, z for this reaction that is uh, 4 alpha is 137 raised to power 3 into e naught plus 1 it comes out to be 1.686 square. So F value it comes out to be 8.9 into 10 is to power minus of 4 <coughs> and the tau for this reaction so the half life period it is given 53.28 days so that is equal to 4.603 into 10 is to power 6 second so therefore <clears throat> if we multiply these two values and what we get is equal to 4097 and if we take the log of this value fk tau a so this comes out to be equal to 3.61 
so if you check in this uh, table so the the logarithmic value of this comparative half life so it tells us about uh, the type of transition whether it is a allowed transition or a forbidden transition and uh, the value of uh, this uh, log of fk if it is less than 4 then it is uh, a super allowed transition So therefore, uh, it is uh, uh, the reaction so which we have discussed. So this uh, nuclear reaction, it is uh, a type of a super allowed transition which is uh, from 3 by 2 minus to 3 by 2 minus. So uh, it is a mixed transition. So which is uh, uh, both followed by ZT rule and Fermi rule. So this is a mixed transition. So mixed allowed transition. <coughs> so therefore uh, from the value of uh, this uh, lambda k we can find out the value of uh, this fk and if the half life of period of our that particular reaction is uh, uh, known then we can find out the comparative half-life of a reaction and which tells us about the allowed and forbidden type of transition now here in this expression I have used uh, some uh, equations as a direct so uh, in this uh, equation so I have considered this value of me square and I have considered that uh, a factor of 2 which is a present so that is due to the presence of a 2 electron so in the k shell so this is all about uh, the orbital electron capture process so uh, see you in the next lecture so if you have any doubt you can write in the comment box so uh, the theory of a beta decay that is almost finished and uh, in the next lecture we will discuss about uh, the gamma uh, transition and uh, types of uh, selection rules uh, which uh, uh, have been uh, uh, explained uh, which will explain the uh, type of electric or uh, magnetic gamma transition so okay dear students till then goodbye